So it is a great honor to have Jun Rao, who is the co-founder of this biggest data, streaming data uh, platform today called Confluence. And he's going to give us a quick 10-minute talk on what it is and why this is such a cool data platform. So Jun, the floor is yours. Right. Thanks, Jinglish, for the introduction. Well, first of all, uh, thank you for inviting me to give you this opportunity to present to you. And uh, good afternoon, everyone. So my name is Jun Rao. I'm based in Bay Area. So we've been doing this uh, data streaming platform at Confluent for more than 10 years. So we started in 2014, and uh, I think there's still a lot of uh, ahead of uh, us. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to just uh, talk briefly about what data streaming platform is, and uh, and then I'll switch a little bit to how is that related to the ongoing things you know, with the analytics and especially the generative AI world. So if you are a little bit new to data streaming platform, right? the heart of that was Apache Kafka. Um, this is uh, one of the most uh, popular open source projects out there. Uh, it's built upon a set of open standard and open protocol, and it's widely deployed across hundreds of organizations across the world, including some of the largest uh, business you can see in the world. So how did that get started? where we started a Kafka to solve the problem we observed at LinkedIn back in 2010. So this is a little bit of problem you know, we, we saw around that time. So the key problem is, it was LinkedIn was generating a lot of data, but the problem is a lot of those data were locked in those siloed data stores. Um, because every uh, application team, right, when they started building something, you know, they were uh, used like, one of their favorite store, right, to store some of the data. And for a lot of the uh, LinkedIn use, uh, innovation, right, the key of that is to make use of those, those data. So initially, a lot of data usage is really just in a data warehouse, right, which says, you know, once you get all the data in the data warehouse, you know, that's where you can do all the interesting things on your data. But over time, we just realized this is actually not the case because over time, there are a lot of more data, uh, data sinks that need to access the same data for various other types of analytics. But what's more, there are lots of those applications, uh, we call them microservices now, they also need to tap into the same data. And a lot of them need to access those data in real time, right? Because they want to have, to have those freshness, uh, unlike the maybe batch-oriented data warehousing. The question, you know, how do we unlock those data, right? So around that time, there actually wasn't like a good infrastructure for solving this problem. That's when we, uh, we invented Kafka. So with Kafka, we created a platform that you can integrate all those data in real time as streams. So those data will be available to all those systems and applications that need to tap into data. And you can have those access those data in real time uh, with the same interface. So with this, we sort of solved a fundamental problem uh, for LinkedIn as a business, and probably it applies to a lot of businesses now, which is to have the ability to uh, open up those siloed data and make that widely, uh, widely apl uh, applicable and usable, not just in one system, but in many applications. So fast forward to that, you know, well, with the invention of Kafka, we have added a few other things to build this more complete data streaming platform. So we added the integration layer you know, with the connect so that we can tap into those common data sources more easily. Um, we also have built a corresponding stream processing layer because once you have this stream of data, just like a database, you want to do some transformation of that, right? You want to make the data available in the format that's ready for business use. So this often includes a little bit, you know, transformation from one format to another, a little bit data enrichment, maybe some uh, aggregation, right? So with that, we have two processing layers built. You know, one is Kafka Stream, which is a little bit like Java layer that allows you to do this DSP-like processing. But we also have this more declarative layer built on Apache Flink, which is another popular open source project that allows you to do stream processing in the SQL-like layer. So this is like roughly the, the whole data streaming platform uh, picture, right? We have the storage engine, we have the connect interface, we have the stream processing layer. As you can see, all of those are built on open standard and open protocol. 
So this is like a pretty open uh, platform that together has this uh, data streaming uh, ecosystem. So what's happened, what's going forward, you know, what's especially what's happening with the new advancement in the data analytics space and the generative AI space. So what we have seen is with this data streaming platform, right? A lot of operational space have uh, already adopted this data streaming platform where they unlock all the data and those unlocked data will be freely flowing across various microservices and applications. A lot of the event-driven applications have been built around that to tap into the capability of taking actions as new things are happening within the database, within the, uh, within the, uh, the data system in a, in a company. Now, when it comes to the analytical space, things you know, are still a little bit batch-oriented. So these are the typical things that's happening in the data warehouse, in the data lake, right? You, you, will, you will do what we call uh, ERT. You first extract all the raw data, right? And land that into like a data lake, you know, data warehouse. And once you land, only once the data is landed there, you will do the transformation to have the data prepared, you know, cleaned a little bit so that it can have this ready to use format for business. So, uh, so, uh, so what's the problem with, with that architecture? Well, the first problem, you know, the data is not available in real time, right? Because, you know, this tend to be a little bit batch or in the system. The second thing is those cleaned data, right? Once you have that cleaned, you know, it's sort of locked into the system, right? But in reality, the cleaned data is needed a lot in the operational space, you know, by those applications, right? So a lot of places what are doing what we call this reverse ERT, ETR to have the clean data and revert it back into the streaming space for the online applications to tap into that. As you can see, this is a little bit messy and your data still is not very available in real time. So that's like one aspect in the data analytics space. The other thing that has been happening pretty quickly is the generative AI space. So historically, a lot of the analytic uh, data lakes, right, and a little bit like on the data warehouse, a big part of that was used um, was to use those raw data to build very customized AI models. So you know, you look at a particular application, right? There's a lot of like trial and error you have to do to do feature extraction of the raw data, and then you will spend a lot of time to tune the data to build a very specific model just for that application. But that landscape has been changing quite uh, dramatically. With the advance of generative AI, there's a premise of a few very powerful generic model that can be capable of doing lots of interesting things uh, in a wide uh, variety of applications. So a lot of the uh, processing right, that used to be devoted into the model building, now is more devoted into the inferencing time because you know there are a lot of uh, applications can now be built much quicker by leveraging those more generic built uh, applications, uh, gen gen genet genetic um, uh, machine learning models. So that's another landscape that's changing. We are seeing a lot of the processing that's moving from a little bit the, uh, the batch oriented space into the more real time inferencing time because a lot of those uh, AI powered agents need to be more interactive um, and then that needs to be happening in real time. So uh, as you can see, you know, a lot of the inferencing of uh, checking of this model also need to tap into those cleaned version of the data. Right? So how do we get that? So what we are seeing is the data streaming platform can be a pretty powerful platform to improve all those. So what we are uh, recommending here, you know, is if we can shift some of the transformation, right, the processing that used to be done in a little bit batch fashion and move it to the left, then we can leverage in this data, uh, data streaming platform to power more use cases. So this is like the uh, picture that we imagined. So with this picture, right, you have all the data in your, in your company unlocked and then presented as a stream. And we have, uh, we have this real-time processing layer built upon Apache Flink that can do all the transformation to have the clean the data available in real time. 
And we can continue to make that data available as table format, you know, using our uh, product like table flow, right? To have that data available in iceberg, to have that in the ready, uh, cleaned, processed version, and your, your analytical tools can continue to work on that. But what's more, the architecture is now much cleaner. You know, you don't need to have this reverse ETL. The transformation was done uh, in real time on all the cleaner data will be available not only to your data lake and data warehouse, but also to a lot of real-time applications. And what's more, um, you can do all the real-time AI inferencing in real time as, as part of this platform. We have extended frame, uh, the Flink framework to do all the model inferencing uh, within Flink. So as you have data being processed, you can leverage this, uh, this platform to do further more on the leveraging of the data using uh, AI models as reference. So once you have this, right, there's more you can do to add strong governance, to get uh, more sharing, so that you can make this uh, platform much more powerful. So, so that's sort of our pitch. We, th well, we feel um, this data streaming platform is, uh, has been there for like a quite some time, but you know, we are really just getting started because there's so much more we can do to leverage this platform. Uh, for both the operational space as well as the analytical and uh, generative AI space. With that, you know, thank you everyone for listening. I don't know if you have any time for questions, but if there is, uh, I'd be happy to take any. Thank you. We have time to take one question if someone has one. Otherwise, I have one ready. Uh, Jun, as you uh, look at these newer workloads with Gen AI, do you tend to see different types of uh, operators, transformation operators that become more important? Certainly there was a vector database, so I'm assuming embedding is probably important, but do you see uh, shifts in the type of compute that you have to do uh, in this real time? And does some of this embedding, for example, where you might have to call an external model, make it harder to do some of the real time work because now, you are no longer in control of that external call that you're making. Yeah, that's a good question. I think what we are seeing, right, you know, in that space, you know, is uh, that there's going to be like uh, a few very powerful, right, large uh, uh, generic model. And then for some specific application, maybe you will use a little bit like a fine-tuned, maybe distilled, right, specific model, right, uh, for that particular application just to be uh, cost-effective. And once you have that, uh, at the inferencing time, right, you typically need a few things. You need uh, uh, the vector database to do the embedding, right? So you need like embedding model to get that part. And once you have the, 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 embed, the, the embedded data uh, extracted, you also typically need uh, some rack support, right? To do a little bit, to bring in a little bit of context so that you can use uh, this uh, model uh, specifically for your application. And once that you can, uh, you have the context, you can uh, do the inferencing, right? And then you can continue with the, uh, the rest of the flow. So there are, I think, some of the challenges, you know, one, of course, yeah, you need to have all the serving layer, right? You need mm -hmm. some uh, vector database, you know, you need all those model serving capability. Some of them uh, would require uh, GPU access, right? And a lot of those, I think, need to be real time. And uh, so there is a lot of the things you need to build to make that uh, real-time cost-effective. And um, th there's a lot of options, you know, sometimes, you know, it's, um, it, it's probably better to just integrate with some external service providers on some of those, but some other times, you know, making external calls can be expensive. So for some other things, that, that's a little bit becoming commodity, right? You can also try to bring in some of the stuff, right, to serve it, uh, those yourself. Great, so, yep, uh, yep, wonderful. That makes sense, thank you. Right. Yeah, okay. Thanks for coming Thank over. Thank you, Ignish. Yeah. Right. All right. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.